and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. As always, I'm going to link up my sources in the Facebook comments where we are live and new this week, live on YouTube. It'll also be in the show notes at diabetes-connections.com when this airs as a podcast, so you can read more if you want on your own schedule. In the News is brought to you by Real Good Foods. Find their breakfast line and all their great products in your local grocery store, Target, or Costco. Earlier today, Dexcom released some new features for its Follow app. It now includes a home screen widget to an Apple device, a quick glance for Android users. You can submit a technical support request or request a callback via Follow's contact menu. I assume that means you can request replacement sensors from within the app. And you can access the status page via Follow's help menu to check the status of any of the Dexcom systems. Now, this is version 4.4 of Dexcom Follow and applies only to U.S. users. Some news in the stem cell race. A few companies now looking at this as a practical cure for type 1. Vertex announced that the first patient in its islet cell replacement therapy is doing well with a lower A1C and less insulin needs. The person is on immunosuppressive therapy and does still need to use insulin, although 90% less. Now, this caught my eye because this person was diagnosed 40 years ago. This is not a recent diagnosis. This person also had incredible hypoglycemia up to five episodes a day. Pretty much they have their life back now. Now, one person does not make a cure, but it's good to see these therapies moving forward. You may recall Vertex acquired SEMA and joins Viacite, which has an encapsulated stem cell system. The hope for all long-term is that no immune suppressants would be needed. A new eye scan that could help diagnose diabetes is moving ahead. British-based startup Acuity has received investment funding for the Acuity Indigo, a non-contact optical glucose meter. The company says it's different from the failed Google contact lens. The Google version measured fluid, but the Acuity looks within the eyeball. The company says, quote, it is a transparent, stable environment whose glucose levels correlate with those of the blood. The Acuity Indigo sends a faint beam of light into the eyeball and measures the light that bounces back into the device. It can infer glucose levels in the eye based on the refraction of the returning light. Medtronic is in talks to snap up what sounds like a pretty advanced patch pump from an Israeli company called Triple Jump. The triple jump system has a compact, fully portable, battery-operated miniature insulin pump and handheld controller. The release says it will be included in a future artificial pancreas system and that Medtronic plans to integrate triple jump's device to improve its pumping capabilities. No surprise, but important info here, using a flash glucose monitor can improve A1Cs and reduce DKA cases. Big study in Scotland using the Libre called a flash monitor because this version isn't continuous. You have to swipe to see your glucose. The technology has been free in Scotland since 2018. So using people with type 1 went from about 3% in 2017 to 46% in 2020. Improvement was seen across all ages, genders, and socioeconomic lines. Also, improvement was seen regardless of prior or current pump use, completion of a diabetes education program, or early flash monitoring adoption. It's controversial, but more research into preventing type 1. New studies showing that longer breastfeeding and later introduction to gluten may reduce the risk. This was a look at aggregate studies in Sweden, which has the second highest incidence of type 1 in the world. Number one is Finland. I knew you were going to ask. For babies nursed for at least 6 to 12 months, the risk of developing type 1 went down 61% no gluten until three to six months of age lowered the risk 64%. The studies also pointed to a protective effect of vitamin D supplements during infancy. These researchers are careful to say this is not definitive, but instead points to the need for more studies of babies' diet and vitamin intake and the risk of type 1. And some early news about type 1 diabetes pregnancy and the gut microbiome. This study shows pregnant women with type 1 had a decrease in good gut bacteria and an increase in bad gut bacteria that promote intestinal inflammation and damage to the intestinal lining. These changes could contribute to the increased risk of pregnancy complications seen in women with type 1. This is very early on. The next stage of the project was to identify markers that would determine which women with type 1 diabetes might benefit from safe interventions during pregnancy, including dietary changes. More to come, including mental health help and a bit of a correction on my part. But first, I want to tell you about one of our great sponsors, 
who helps make Diabetes Connections possible. It's real good foods where the mission is be real good. They make nutritious foods, grain-free, high in protein, never added sugar, and from real ingredients. We really like their breakfast line, although Benny rarely eats the waffles or breakfast sandwiches for breakfast. It's usually, you know, after school or late at night. He ate like four waffles at 10 o'clock at night the other day. You can buy real good foods online or find a store near you with their locator right on the website. I will put a link in the Facebook comments and at always at diabetes-connections.com. Back to the news now. And, you know, we talk a lot about mental health and diabetes and how there just aren't enough resources to help. I want to call your attention to a free virtual workshop by the Center for Diabetes and Mental Health. This is tomorrow if you're watching this live. And if you are listening or watching after, I would still urge you to check out the resources. This is from Dr. Mark Heyman, who I've had on the show. He's got his own podcast. Dr. Heyman is a diabetes psychologist, certified diabetes care and education specialist, and he lives with type 1. And I have a bit of a correction to last week's news. I had speculated whether the Dexcom Garmin partnership, which uses the name Connect IQ, had anything to do with Tandem's Control IQ. Well, I heard from a lot of you. Apparently, Garmin's whole app system is just called Connect IQ, and it has been for years. But I did get that interview with Dexcom I had mentioned. So that will be our long format interview episode coming up on Tuesday. And that's a chat with the chief technology officer of Dexcom. The episode out right now is all about Halloween. It's an Ask the D-Mom conversation with my wonderful friend, Maura McCarthy. We talk about everything from candy to getting your kid's insulin pump under the costume to the sugar-free stuff well, from well-meaning neighbors. And that is the episode out right now. And that's in the news for this week. If you like it, please share it. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you back here soon. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.